All right, so we are in this video lesson going to be learning about improper integrals. It's a special type of integral, and we, and along with that, we are learning a special type of technique to uh, handle these uh, kinds of integrals. So, improper integrals. That's how we call them. All right, so improper integrals. And so, as to be successful watching this particular lecture here, it is highly recommended. And it's actually a requirement that you have to, at this point, know what a definite integral is. And as well as uh, know how to use the fundamental theorem of calculus, at least the second part. Okay? So that, uh, so that uh, you can understand and have, uh, so that the you can understand well into the, the technique being used here when we are handling those or what so called the improper integrals. Okay, so I highly recommend that you can find my other my earlier video lessons on the, the fundamental theorem of calculus, particularly the, the second part, and also learn from my video lessons where I uh, explain what a definite integral is. Okay, and so here we go. Let's go ahead and dive into that and find out what an improper integral is. All right, so now let me bring up a, an introductory problem. So let me introduce the following problem that motivates, that, that promotes into the idea over here. So at this point in your learning, let's say we have a function e to the x, okay? It's an e to the x or maybe e to the minus x, right? And uh, so it's a function. And now we would like to find uh, the definite integral from 0 to 1 on that function. So the function here is e to the minus x. And what we have here now is a definite integral on this function e to the minus x, but from integrating, integrating over the interval from 0 to 1. So this is clearly, and by the way, I have to now mention this function here is a continuous function. Okay, So that function here, f of x, okay. and then now I have to make a quick note for here, f of x is a, a continuous function. Okay. Continuous. All right. So a couple of things we know, and then, and, and at least it's continuous inside of that interval from zero to one. The interval that we are taking the integration work over. And so in that way, at this point, uh, as that's why I said earlier, you know, you need to. No, and you need to master your skill on how to use the fundamental theorem of calculus as well as understanding well what a definite integral is. And so with the fundamental theorem of calculus, the second part, then this one here is easy. We can just go ahead and find the value there by taking the antiderivative. So that gives me e to the, I mean minus e to the negative x, and then we're evaluating that at the two definite, definite integral limits from 0 to, to 1. And so in that way, now the answer comes out easily to be, so minus e to the negative 1, and then minus, again, then there's negative e to the minus 0, OK? And so this part here is nothing but just a, an e to the 0 power, and so that's a, that's a plus 1 there. And then now we're looking at 1 mi mi minus 1 over e for that, so keep leaving our exp Final answer in exact expression. That's what we end up with. So this problem stops. I mean, ends right there, being an easy problem by using the fundamental theorem, theorem of calculus. Okay. So nothing much to discuss about this problem anymore. I'm going to quickly erase that. Same function here. Same function here. Now, allow me to introduce. What about? We have a low end here. This same integral. This same. I mean, it started out being a definite integral, but from this same integral, think about the low end. I still keep that as a definite limit. And see, at this point, a little bit clarification, but what it means by being a definite integral is that, is that because simply at least the low limits and the upper limits, they are all definite finite values. Like say, like I had a 1 up here, it's a finite value. Okay, and 0 down here, it's also a finite value. So a definite integral means the lower limits and the upper limits, they're all definite integral, I mean definite uh, values, that there are finite values that, that define a 
close interval in that in the, in the interval that we are integrating integrating over. Okay, but now back to what I was uh, on my way of halfway saying it. So now in this interval, in this integral right here. So now in this integral right here, I'm gonna keep for now, for now. I'm gonna keep the lower limits here definite. But how about I'm gonna let the, the upper limit here to become something like this, and you haven't seen that before. How about pause and infinity? Pause and infinity. All right. And so just like that, there. So now back in any of our integral problem, the idea now is that, or you have seen the problem. Here before we can do an integral, a definite integral on, on the function one over x from zero, I mean from one to five. That's a definite integral. The function here one over x is clearly continuous at least inside of that interval. Okay? But now instead of doing the definite integral like this, I'm gonna for now starting out by keeping the bottom, the lower limit here to be a finite value, but then the upper limit here I'm gonna use uh, infinity. So infinity basically here means, infinity here just means we're gonna look at some upper limits that of course higher value than the lower limits. Some upper limits that's of course higher value than the lower limits. But then it's not a finite number any, any longer. Okay, it's not a finite number any longer for the upper limits. That's one case right there. And so Generally, the two problems that I brought up right here, I haven't mentioned how we solve these yet, but the two, problem I, the two problems I brought up right here, they are referred as, a, well, welcome to that world here, these are improper integrals, okay? Any one of these are the improper integrals. That's how we call them. And then there are more. So this is just the one, of the, one among the many different in, improper integrals, and as we progress through our lesson here, you will be exposed to, you will be introduced to more improper integrals, but this is the first form right there, and I will get, uh, I will get to that point where I will classify all of the different uh, improper integrals here, okay? But so it's improper in a way that, uh, in this particular integral over here, one end, the lower end particularly is a, is a finite value, and the upper end of the integral limit is some kind of infinity, some kind of value, some kind of infinite value, of course, greater than the lower limits, but you know, unknown, infinitely unknown. Okay? And so generally any of these, any one of these two brings us into the kind of integral problem where we have a function, okay? And and supposedly continuous, at least in the interval from or how about, let me finish writing it down, we have a function, and we are attempting, we are attempting to take an integral, the integral over this function from an interval, from an interval that starts with a finite value a, but then ending at uh, infinity. So, and for now, f of x is uh, continuous, okay? And in this problem, we particularly looking at uh, f of x is continuous, in the interval now, instead of being the closed interval, now it's only a half open interval. So it's closed in, on the, the, the left end, the lower end of the interval, and now it's to infinity on the other end. That's what I meant earlier, that's what I meant in saying earlier that this is a half open interval. Okay? And so that's one form of the, in, the improper integral. Okay? So now, let me get start directly into showing anyone watching this video how to handle this kind of problem. And then we are from there, we're gonna start generalizing a, a solid method right there, okay? We're gonna, uh, so now let me just uh, introduce the, the, the idea right there. So at this point, anyone watching this video, please be uh, clear with me on this matter. At least whoever watching this video is at a calculus two level or the more the formally, it's the integral calculus level. So. Anyone watching this video is expected to be at least familiar with uh, quite a few graphs already. So allow me to bring up the graphs and the shading that, that represents this integral problem so that uh, we can have a better understanding of uh, the solution that's about to be coming next. Okay? And so, and again, I have to remind anyone. An integral, doesn't matter if it's a definite integral we've learned back then or this kind of integral, the improper integral, it's a keep, a def, a, an integral is accumulation. An integral is accumulation. 
doesn't matter if it's a definite integral that we've learned earlier or the version we've learning, we're learning now, we're currently getting into it right now, the improper integral, but an integral in general is a accumulation. So in that way, all right, so here we are on our uh, blank graphing space here, and I'm using, again, I'm using Desmos for uh, generating all of these graphs and, and, and graphical description of our integral problems. So the graph for the, f the graph for e to the minus x that I introduced on the board on the board earlier is here. This nice uh, curve that's continuously falling down from the left to the right and it crosses through that uh, y axis at uh, supposedly y equals one right here on the y axis. Okay, and so now as far as the integral problem, we're looking at uh, we're looking at uh, graphically a accumulation that happens from zero. So zero is here, okay? So now, now let me bring up the interval. So zero is this line that just popped out right here, this vertical line, x equals zero is here. But uh, we don't have a finite upper end, okay? And so, so here's the idea right there. The, the, the finite upper end, I mean the infinite upper end right here really means, uh, really means how, how about, uh, we're gonna pick an arbitrary, and that's why I have a handle right here. We're gonna pick an arbitrary start, I mean, an arbitrary finite upper end. So we're still gonna start out on this graph right here of the e to the minus x. I'm starting out, my low end of the definite integral is at x equals zero. But now I'm gonna create an, an, an arbitrary uh, upper end to be, let's say we can call it, it's a t value. We can call it a t value, okay? And then, from there, think about it. But this is in the end, our problem is not a, is not a definite integral problem. So now with this t, that's why I'm creating a hand over here. With this t value, I'm going to keep dragging it to the right hand point, dragging it further to the right hand side, and dragging it further to the right hand side. So observe that kind of uh, action that I'm doing. Observe that kind of motion that I'm doing to the, to the uh, hand over here. So this is again, this is about some upper end of, of an, an, some arbitrary a definite integral, some arbitrary x equals b right here, or x equals t right here. So we go from from zero to t, but then I'm gonna let t keep, and that's what the, the, the dragging of the handle to the right hand side is for. I'm gonna let t keep getting further out and further out to the right hand side. All right, so observing the action, observing the motion of, of the, that description or that illustration on the, on the picture earlier. Now it actually brings up for us a solution for the problem right there. Okay, so now I'm gonna switch over to my other board. And, or actually I can do it right here. I have explained earlier in the graph that so doing this thing. So the idea came out is that we're gonna create an arbitrary, so it's, we're gonna, on the function e to the minus x, we're gonna create accumulation that goes from zero to some arbitrary t value. Supposedly this t is finite. So we go from zero to t as a definite integral. All right, and then, early, and then as you have seen earlier in the graphical, as you have seen earlier in the graphical illustration, then I was using that handle to drag the t value further to the right hand side. And so in that way, that means uh, with this upper Supposedly or arbitrarily finite, but from that upper finite limit right there, I'm gonna go ahead and take the limit as letting t approach positive infinity. All right, so this is how we are, so this is the plan, that's the plan, okay? Whoever came up with that plan, but that plan here, the idea now is that that plan here is going to get us that answer. So. So now we're gonna turn our focus into this kind of problem. So all of a sudden, we kind of departed away from this main problem, but we start considering this problem right here. We're going from, on the same function, e to the minus x, but I'm integrating from zero to t, an arbitrary t. So assuming t is a finite value. But then on top of that, we're letting the limits here, we're letting t approach positive infinity. And so on top of that, that is why, now I have to clarify, that is why we are using our calculus one understanding. We're taking the limit of this integral here as allowing t getting to positive infinity. All right, and so now in order to do that, okay, so now I'm gonna hold on to the limit operation. 
But at least the first thing we can do now with the fundamental theorem of calculus, we know that at least if we're treating ignoring at ignoring the limit symbol at this point, at least if we're treating this, and like I said earlier, this is an arbitrary, some arbitrary uh, definite integral problem. We're going from zero to a, a, a t value, some arbitrary t value. And so if that is the case, then according to the fundamental theorem of calculus, our antiderivative for e to the minus x is going to give us minus e to the minus x. Just like how I solved that this problem earlier with from zero to, to one. So we definitely use uh, the fundamental theorem of calculus that says uh, find the antiderivative first. And then from that point, I am going to, in the next step, evaluate this antiderivative at the two values. Low limit, zero, but upper limit is t. Okay? And then again, one more step that I am going to still hold on to that uh, limit. I'm still going to ignore that limit operation because I'm saving that for the last step. So the limit operation is here. That's just something to be aware about. But now in the next step, according to the fundamental theorem of calculus, I am going to evaluate the upper limit of our integral problem into the antiderivative and then do the same substitution for the lower limits of the integral problem. And then we're going to subtract, subtract out the two according to the fundamental theorem of calculus. So here I'm looking at e, and I mean minus e to the minus t. Okay, so I use parentheses very carefully for any time that I'm doing a substitution. So t is substituted for x. So I put t in parentheses, and, and that minus sign came is outside of parentheses because of, that was a minus x. Okay, and so what now we we only replacing x with t, and then I'm going to subtract. Okay, and now it's minus e to the minus. Now I'm substituting zero for x. All right, so there we go. Now we have our uh, the Fundamental theorem applied or almost, almost all the way through. We already substitute the lower limits and the upper limits of our integral problem into the antiderivative. Okay, and so now I, I will get to the other board. So from the last step right here, and I'm going to take very cautious step right here. So and, and moving a little bit slow at this point. So from the last step, then in our next step right here, algebraically, you see the t. The, e, the minus e to the negative t right here. That can be algebraically written as a minus 1 over e to the t. This is all due to the fact that this is our, it's, it's a, see the negative power t previously now become a positive power t in the denominator. And that negative sign came out from the negative sign that we've had in the last step. Like that, that negative sign. Okay? And then right here is that uh, minus t. That's negative expression minus the power right there becomes a in the going going into the denominator. Now power zero, since I'm still here on this board, power zero of the e is going to give me a one. So if minus negative one is going to give me a plus one. All right. So now I'm looking at a, a a final expression so far in terms of t. So all of a sudden using we 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 now realize that using the fundamental theorem of calculus and and Treating the upper limits with that arbitrary t value, with that arbitrary t variable, then we ended up our expression here. We ended up instead of a numerical value, we ended up with a an expression in terms of t. And now at this step, it's this step here. We are ready to take the limit operation as we allow t to increase to positive infinity. Okay, and so in that way, here's how it works. Now, so at this point, needless to say. We have to bring in our understanding from differential calculus, or many schools call that calculus one. Okay, we bring in our calculus one understanding the concept of taking limits, limits going to infinity. Okay, so now limit law say we can go term by term. The second term here is already a constant, so nothing much to be the, to be the arguing about that. It's going to remain one here for the second term. Now the first term here we have a constant divided by a growing quantity. So as t goes to infinity, e to the e to the t in the denominator here will keep growing. And so that means the first term here all together will, will go to a 0. And the second term will go to a 1. So our final limit is a 1. Okay, Our final limit is a 1. Now, and actually, I'm putting this in, an, in a, a box a little too rushed right here. It's a 1. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, 
I gotta be clear with a couple of logics here. So I introduced this problem and I explained that the plan to handle this problem, the plan is to handle this problem is to create a definite integral with an arbitrary upper limit t right here. And then we're letting t approach positive infinity. We're letting t go tending to positive infinity. And so, and I said earlier, we kind of departed from this problem and, and turn our focus over to a limit problem. So the answer one earlier was a, the answer to this limit problem. This answer one right here truly is the answer to the limit problem. To this limit problem here. Okay, but now at this point, since we found out, since we found out that this limit here does have, this limit here does have a, a finite value. This, it has a finite right, value. It has a finite value. It's a final limit of our uh, limit that I introduced earlier. So now we can say, now we can say that this means as a conclusion. This integral, this improper integral from zero to infinity. Okay, because ex I mean exactly what does it mean by an in, 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 in integral from zero to infinity? Then we don't we didn't have a formal definition yet. I did not even introduce what it means. But now we turn our focus over to a limit problem. And and, and I, I said earlier it was a plan for how to handle this problem. So now you can you can say that the function e to the minus x. As we take the integral, the improper integral that going from zero to positive infinity on that function, now that answer here can be equal, can be equal to one, and that is now we claim that it is our final answer for this. Okay, so the the reason I so I mentioned this in a sense that you know eventually I'm going to have to give a formal definition of what it means by having an upper limit being an in, in, in infinity in, in infinity like this. Because think about it, infinity itself, for anyone up to this point of your learning in calculus, you have to be well aware in, infinity is not a value, is not a finite value. Okay, so you can't, you, if we're just simply doing this work, if we're just naively looking at this and, and think about do the antiderivative, okay, do the antiderivative and then do this uh, zero to infinity and then substitute in e to the that e to the minus infinity and, and minus and the negative e to the negative zero right there. That makes no sense because infinity by itself is not a value to be able to substitute in. And that's why if we apply the fundamental theorem of calculus immediately in this step and, and roughly, uh, roughly assuming that we know we understand this, mean, the meaning of this sim sim symbol, we're going to end up in a wrong uh, the answer at, at some point. Okay, and so that's why now I'm introducing that we had a problem. We had a problem. And then before we knew that what that problem really, or before we even knew how to handle that problem, I introduced the planning, and that was through the picture description, through the, 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 the graphical illustration. I introduced that we can create the plan here as we create. Okay, so we kind of depart from that uh, main fun main problem. We we create a similar problem by starting out with a with a definite integral at some arbitrary t upper end of our integral, and then we're letting that t go into uh, positive infinity. And so we treat that problem there as a limit problem. And now, once that limit problem, once that limit problem turn out turn out having a successful finite final value right here, then we can go back and say, hey, so that means now we can, that now means this integral here will simply take that value, that final limit there at its final value. Okay, all right, and so now for, I'm gonna start using this term now and then I will also give a formal definition later. So, so now this finite, I mean this limit came out finite value and so that means we can, as a conclusion, this integral, this improper integral had a finite answer, okay? And so that means uh, we can now also say that this integral, okay? This integral here, this integral, and of course now I'm talking simply about the improper integral. So this integral is, uh, a convergence, okay? This integral itself is convergent. 
All right. So that we got one problem down, and I showed you the planning. Let's look at another problem right here. And this is not an, the one I'm doing right now. Is not even an example yet. Okay. I just want to introduce the idea right here. All right. So let's look at another problem. All right. So I brought this up on the board earlier as well. And let's now look at it. So I also wrote down earlier, so what about we have a problem as following? 1 over x, okay? That's the function. So that's our function. And we want to check the, the improper integral from how about from 1 to infinity, okay? From 1 to infinity. Again, infinity is not a number to plug in. And that's why this whole problem here is called an improper integral. Okay, the kind of problem like that. And there are more different forms out there, but for now, generally, I'm focusing right now to on whatever function f of x. We're taking an integral from a finite lower limit, finite lower limit to an infinite upper end right there, positive infinity. Okay, and of course, the function f of x is. Uh, Continuous, okay. In at least that interval, with the with the closed end on a right there, but with an open end, half open interval from a from a, and above, okay. And so just like that, so just to make sure, one over x is at least uh, continuous in this interval from one to anywhere above that, okay. As a half open interval between. You know, from 1 to positive infinity. Okay? And so now, but how do we find that end, that uh, work right here? How do we handle this problem? So again, let me bring back that uh, graphical illustration on the computer screen right there. So what I see now on my browser. So 1 over x is this function with that curve. And, uh, and again, at this point, anyone viewing the video lesson here is expected to know the graphs of these uh, basic functions right there. Okay? And, uh, and now I'm going to, the interval is from 1 to infinite. But see, infinite is not a value that we, is it here? I don't know. Is that here? I don't know. Because in, infinity is not a value. So we don't know where to put infinity. So we so the best thing we can do is to put down the lower end of our interval. So x equals one is here, just like how I wrote the problem down earlier. So this is the lower end of our integration interval, okay? And so now, on the on the picture here, I have the lower end here, but where can I put the upper end? So the best thing I can do is to create. See, so now let's just say we create a an arbitrary an arbitrary t value, okay, an arbitrary t value supposedly greater than, greater than this lower limit of our integral. So with this arbitrary t value, then we do have a definite integral from 0 to t, okay. But then once we had, once we successfully think in fundamental theorem of calculus will allow us to, will allow us easily to find this shading area graphically representing the definite integral anywhere from zero, I mean from one to t on this function. This is the function for one you know, over x. And then once we've set up that uh, integral, then we're going to start moving that handle. See, graphically speaking on this drawing right here, I'm going to move that arbitrary t value further and further to the right hand side. Okay, and so you can now observe, and the same with the, the previous problem, as we move uh, this handle to the right hand side, we keep increasing area, we keep getting more area we keep having more accumulation added on, accumulated on to our uh, definite area, uh, our definite integral. All right, so in that way, so once again, the plan now is uh, we're going to depart away from that a little bit. But we're going we're gonna to say that, hey, we're going to create, okay, we're going to create a problem that a, a temporary or, you know, an arbitrary definite integral from 1 to an arbitrary t value. And of course, t is greater than or equal to 1 on this continuous function 1 over x. Now, it's continuous in at least that interval from 0 to t. So see, now I can double check right here with t, 1 over x. I mean, I can uh, the 
get and clarify that 1 over x is continuous okay, on that interval from 1 to t. So t here is, we're going to pretend it's a, it's a finite arbitrary value anywhere above 1. So now with, from 1 to t, it's a closed interval. But then in that way, after we produce, so the way how I'm introducing this also the, the implies uh, some kind of order operation. We first need to create a definite integral problem. And fundamental theorem of calculus can assist us with all that. And then on top of that, we're going to do the, the limit problem by allowing t to approach positive infinity, just like how I was moving that handle further out to the right-hand side. OK? And so now in this way, with that work in mind right here, now we have a, a, a direction of what to do right here. With this limit problem, first, it started out first. It started out being a definite integral. So I'm going to mostly, I'm going to write for now, turn all of my focus into this, handling this definite integral problem. So fundamental theorem of calculus says the antiderivative of 1 over x is natural log of x with an absolute value. Okay? And then after taking the antiderivative of, of uh, the, the function here, I am going to substitute that antiderivative or evaluate that antiderivative at 1 and t. 1 is the lower end of the interval, the integration interval, and t is the upper end of the integration interval. But then once that is successful, then we will take the limits by allowing t to infinity. That's the idea. Okay, and then, so now, that means uh, I'm still holding on because we still didn't get to that stage where we're taking the limit yet. So the limit stays as a final step right there. But now continuing with the fundamental theorem of calculus, I am going to substitute t into the function. So I have, I will produce the following. Natural log of absolute value t minus natural log of 1. Okay. That's how I'm seeing it. And so now all of a sudden I realize that using the fundamental theorem of calculus and treating t here as in some arbitrary value, some arbitrary upper end, some variable upper end arbitrary, uh, you know, where t is greater than 1, then I ended up consequently, after the fundamental theorem of, of calculus, a, an expression in terms of t over here. And then with this expression in terms of t, now I can go ahead and take the limit as t, uh, allowing t to grow to positive infinity. And by the way, algebraically, this natural log of 1 here is going to become 0 easily. It's just the, the basic arithmetic with logarithm. So that means in the next step, I am only going to have to worry about what is the limit for this natural log of t function as we're letting t approaching positive infinity. As we are letting t approaching positive infinity. All right, and so in that way, so in that way, this answer this time, for the answer this time right here, then, well, knowing the graph for t is a good, I mean, knowing the graph for natural log of x is an, an excellent idea right here. So, all right, so quickly on the computer screen with decimals again, see, this is the graph for natural log of x or natural log of t. So, here we're looking at the t being the main variable at our, of our final expression. So, this axis here is the t axis. As t keep getting further to the right hand side, our logarithm function keep rising, vertically rising, vertically rising as we navigate, as we let t grow into positive infinity, going to the right direction. And so in that way, now I can see that uh, the answer to this is uh, positive infinity. Now, but this answer right now is the answer to the limit problem. I got to be clear at that. The answer right now is the answer to the limit problem, okay? But then in what I said earlier, in what, what I explained earlier, we use this problem as a way to, ha as a plan to handle this improper integral. And so now we can make a final conclusion. And allow me to get on the other board and continue my conclusion. So now that means, uh, that means uh, as an introductory level right here, that means uh, the integral, the improper integral on this function, 1 over x, integrating from zero, from 1, from 1 to infinity, okay? 
that is treated as this problem is the logic here is that improper integral is being treated as a limit problem and that limit problem now turns out having value see it was treated as a limit problem from from 1 to t letting t go to positive infinity on 1 over x as a function okay but then so after all that work this limits turn out to be a an infinity so this limits turn out to be an infinity so now i'm 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 saying here's my final conclusion my final conclusion says this integral 1 to positive infinity right here of the function is uh, divergent okay is this improper integral is divergent it has a it has a limits it's a if we treat it as a limit then it has a limits that grow to positive infinity some other limits problem can also turn out into a non-existent value that will come that can also be a, the case so in any way in, in either case either the, the answer to this limit either the answer to this this limit grow to infinity like this or the answer to a limit like this grow to a, a non-existing value in any of those two cases right there your improper integral is considered as a is regarded as a divergent integral okay a divergent improper integral okay and because it's it's at a beginning level it's hard to explain but i really hate to use the fact that this integral equal an infinity it makes people get trapped into it will make viewers and people get trapped into the concept of understanding that uh, keep being trapped into the the understanding that this is a value that that an, an that an integral can equal to okay but really the the idea the logic behind it is that we treat the problem as a limit problem and then the limit problem turn into this result okay the limit problem turn into this result and so we can just say that and here we don't even have to worry about is it equal or not it's not really an equality it just simply means it means that uh, this problem right here if we ever have to deal with that the answer to that is it has to be a divergent integral okay a divergent improper integral okay and so now in that way we have seen generally speaking the kind of problem where we have a function at least continuous from from a low value a to the to infinity in that half open interval and so we learned what that was and I, I still have not given out the formal definition yet so the improper integral that we've seen so far that we've been experienced with so far is the improper integral from a to infinity okay on that kind of function so that's generally that's what we were doing right there so now outside of that so outside of this there's another form so there will surely be the case where so now let me get straight into the point there will surely be the case where on a function okay on some function and then and a, supposedly the function is continuous but we're gonna have an integration that goes from accumulation that goes from minus infinity to a so this time the upper end is is the upper end is finite but the lower end right here is infinite okay the lower end is infinite and that's why it's negative infinity right here okay and so I can quickly bring up a another demonstration problem right here let's say how about the function e to the x and then we can go from minus infinity to zero okay minus infinity to zero or to one whichever we want to see it but the point now is that it has a lower end being an infinite lower end and the, the upper end of our integral is a definite value one right here okay so again I'm gonna turn over to the graph the graphical illustration with decimals all right so here this is our function e to the x this is our function to e to the x and then this in the, in the interval I mean a equals 1 is here okay but now I'm gonna create a handle so think about it the idea now is that see how I'm dragging out my handle but further to the left hand side 
So on this picture, think about, and again, with the concept, of, with our understanding at this point that an integral is accumulation, we want to accumulate things from the left to the right on this interval. But think about to the left, so A is here. A equals 1 is here. So this is 1 or A equals 1. I'm going to pick an arbitrary t value, an arbitrary t value anywhere on the left-hand side of uh, A equals 1 or of x equals 1. Like that. So t could be a 0, t could be a, you know, a 0.5, or t could be a negative value, but it's, it's a, let's say we're going to pick an arbitrary t value anywhere less than x equals 1. Okay? And so this accumulation, if we're looking at, uh, if we're setting ourselves into that convention, looking at the graph, the picture from the left to the right, then this blue shaded area here is accumulation from t to 1. Now, I, I, say, I said it out loudly and clearly. This blue area is an accumulation, is a definite integral from an arbitrary t to 1, from t to 1, okay? And so in that way, here's the, the setup, here's the plan for how to handle this problem. So I'm going to, for now, depart from that, depart about worrying, depart from, from worrying about the final answer of this. I'm going to just think about there's a problem that on the function e to the x, we want to be accumulating from a finite arbitrary t to, to 1. It's a definite integral with an arbitrary low n t. And then we're going to take the limit as t, but this time allow t to negative infinity because, again, observe the motion that I can that I was doing with uh, decimals here. Now, with the arbitrary low end, I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep dragging my handle further to the left end, further to the left end of our graph, like further to the left end of our graph. Okay, and that is equivalent to saying that it is equivalent to that doing that operation, taking limits, allowing t to head out to negative infinity. Okay. But so now, again, just similar to what I was introducing earlier, then this problem is fast, is fast, aim to be a definite integral problem with an arbitrary low, t, uh, low n of the interval to, an, uh, to a finite n being a 1 right here. So we can use the fundamental theorem of calculus on this part, ignoring completely the limits work. Okay? And then ignoring the limits work right here, let's, at this point, let's go ahead and advance right here. So e to the x. According to the fundamental theorem of calculus, taking the definite integral from t to 1 on this function, it's going to give me, now first step, find the antiderivative. That gives me e to the x. And we're going to have to evaluate it from t to 1. But see, this time, unlike the earlier problem, t is in the, I mean, in the bottom. It's the lower end of our integration interval. Okay? And then so now, after this step right here, I mean, once we are done with the fundamental theorem of calculus, portion of the problem, then we're going to take on top of that the limit as we allow t to grow to negative infinity. Okay, and so now continuing a little further, fundamental theorem of calculus say we can substitute 1 into the function giving me e to the first power minus e to the t power. Okay, and now with this, we are entirely, uh, we have entirely arrived at a final expression in terms of the t variable. And now I am going to take that limit, allowing t to grow to negative infinity. Okay, and so now e to the first power is e. Okay, but this term right here grows to infinity. This term right here, I mean, as t, I, sh I apologize for saying the, the incorrect thing a little bit, but as t grows to minus infinity, then this e to the t function will grow to zero. Okay, and so. I highly recommend that you bring back your calculus one understanding to see how you know this will become a zero over here. So e to the t, but when t is approaching negative infinity, that overall term will go to a zero. Okay, so review your calculus one material to see why. Like I also have video lesson where I taught about uh, how to take limits of, of, a lim of, a, of a function as we letting t to negative infinity as well. So in the end, here, this problem, we have we, this overall limit. So it started out as a limit. And now when we're taking the limits, here we're at the final conclusion for the limit. So the limit concluded out to be a finite value e. OK? So this is the answer. This is the answer to the limit problem. The answer to the limit problem. But now, once we realize that, then we can say, hey, but we use that as a plan to, to handle this kind of problem. 
So now, as a conclusion, now as a conclusion, I can say that this improper integral minus infinity from minus infinity to one on the function e to the x has an, an answer, has a final, finite answer. That answer there is one. Okay. So so now in the same similarity, in the same generality that we have seen in the earlier problem that I brought up, where it was from, from a value, finite value to positive infinity, and now from a negative infinity to a finite value, then we always start out as a plan. We start out as a plan by setting up a limit problem. Work on the problem, okay? And if the problem of the limit, I mean if the limit problem turns out having an answer, being a finite, then that is concluded to be also the answer, the finite answer to our improper integral. Okay? And so now I'm, I can now put that one in a box right there and saying, hey, so this, as a conclusion, this improper integral goes to one as well. So this is another form. Okay? So I'm saying this improper. This is also an improper integral. This improper integral. And this value 1 is a finite value. Right? This improper integral now is a similar term I've used earlier. Also convergence okay. is convergent. All right. And so that's how I handle that particular problem right here where we, we are brought into a slightly different case. So really, this is a second form. The second form of among the, the, the improper integrals that I have that I've been introducing already, and then we will be keeping uh, we will be uh, uh, ex ex exploring more forms of these. Okay, so the one we're looking at here is we're having a a, a def an indefinite low end, and it, that runs into a definite upper end right here. All right, and so let me quickly bring up another one, and any none of these are none of these are example formal examples yet okay these are only the the introductory problems where I promote the idea and, and so I can show the, the, the technique for that all right so in that case we can look at another one how about back to that function 1 over x right here okay and this time let's do an integral from minus infinity to negative 1 okay minus infinity to negative 1 All right, so let me show you quickly a, a picture of a 1 over x function. All right, so this is our graph for 1 over x function. But we want from minus infinity, so anywhere very far to the left end of the graph, minus infinity to 1. So let me put in the interval. So I mean minus infinity to negative 1. So negative 1 is here. But we will not know where negative infinity is because it's not a finite value to locate. Okay, so now the plan here, in order to handle this problem, in order to handle this problem, and at least I can see that as far as the graph here, I can see that the function is continuous in that interval from from negative infinity to one. Okay, it, we can trace along without lifting the pencil, and so now from that way, I can see that. Uh, you see negative 1 is the upper end, right, and minus infinity. So just in that same plan I've done earlier, why don't we create? So we're going to, for now, momentarily or temporarily depart from this problem. But I'm going to think about we're going to purposely create a problem where a, a temporary problem or an arbitrary problem where we have, where we start the low end at some t arbitrary t value and ending our integral at the upper limit, negative 1. So this is a finite, this is a definite integral problem right here. We're starting out treating it as a definite integral problem, where the low end this time is an, an arbitrary t value. And of course, I'm assuming that t is less value than negative 1. Okay, so once again, let's have a look at that on the picture over here. So negative 1 is here. We're going to pick an arbitrary t value somewhere to the left-hand side of a negative 1. So let's say... Okay, so think about t is somewhere there, and now I, the, the decimal already, decimals already gave me that blue shaded area to represent this is the accumulation that goes from t to negative 1, the accumulation that happens from t to negative 1, okay? And then in that way, 
So now back on my board, let me reinforce the idea. See, from T to negative 1. So that is the picture that you've seen in, in Desmos. But now we are going to let T grow to negative infinity. Okay, and so as we're letting T, as we're dragging, as I'm dragging that handle further out to the left hand side, and we can see that we reach more accumulation. We have more accumulation from, the, from T to negative 1. Okay, more accumulation. So the amount of blue accumulation is getting more, is getting more, but will it go to a value? That's what we want to find out. Okay, and so, but the action, the operation that I'm dragging this handle further to the left hand side, that is nothing but just. Once we have found this integral as an expression based on, this fundamental, based on the fundamental theorem of calculus, then now I can go ahead and at the final step, in the end, I can take the limit, letting t go to a negative infinity. Okay, And that's how we're working on that. And so now, fundamental theorem of calculus, and at this point, it is clear that we are turning completely turning our focus to this uh, limit problem right there. Okay, but then the starting step is to use uh, the fundamental theorem of calculus to handle this definite integral with an arbitrary low nt right here. So, natural log of absolute value of x, and I accidentally wrote t right here. That's the antiderivative for 1 over x, famous. And then we're going to evaluate that from t to negative 1, and assuming that t is less than negative 1, anywhere less than negative 1. And then, of course, once this is successful, we are we will take the limit as the final work, letting t go to negative infinity. Okay, and so now, usually we don't take logarithm of a negative value, but here's the thing: remember, it's when we take antiderivative of a one over x, the answer to to that is a natural log of an absolute value of x. That means when I'm substituting negative 1 in here, it's going to naturally become a positive 1. And that's why here we're looking at natural log of absolute value of negative 1. Subtracting natural log of absolute value t, okay, and then whatever that turns out to be, we're going to take the limit as t goes to negative infinity. Okay, by letting t go to negative infinity. But then here we have to take things a little more cautiously, so I'm going to move over to my my other board here. So on this other board of mine, okay, the f let me allow me to rewrite the step from the earlier, from the other board. Here. All right. So to negative one, that one here is for sure will go to zero. That's the property of, of logarithm. So that means in the next step, this limit right here turn out limits, letting t to negative infinity, but minus natural log of uh, t in absolute value. Okay, and you can see that the interval we're working at here, the interval we're working at here, I have to make a note here. The interval we're working with here is from minus infinity, minus infinity to negative 1. So the, this interval, in other words, what I'm trying to point out is the interval here is completely negative interval. All values here are negative. But the, the natural log we're doing here is a natural log of absolute value t. That means it doesn't matter if t goes to negative infinity or not, but once that t value is going into this one right here, it has to be a positive one. Okay, And so in that way, this will give me overall a minus, I mean just the natural log as t goes to as t goes to positive, I mean as t goes to negative infinity, but every negative value going into this natural log becomes a positive, forcefully become a positive because of that absolute value. And so that grows to positive infinity, but now with a negative sign, the overall limit here is a negative answer. Okay? So now I found that I found out that the limits problem. The limit problem turns out to be a, a an infinite limit, negative infinity limit, okay, and so we can we can think of that as we can think of that as the integral from minus infinity to minus one on the function one over x dx 
has an answer equal to this. But I highly recommend, I, I recommend not to think of that that way as a simple equal, equality. It's, it's not a, a good logic that way. So now the better way of saying now is that simply seeing the limit turns out a negative value. I see that this inter interval, I mean, it's this integral, there's, there's no need to find a value for that because it's, it is a divergent. Okay, so anytime, so combined together with those cases we've learned previously, then anytime the answer of the limit runs into a, a either a positive infinity or a negative infinity or a non-existing value, then the integral, we don't, need to, we don't need to indicate it equals anything. We just say, we just get straight into saying that this integral is a divergent, okay? I really feel hesitate to write this equal infinity like that. All right, and so now we have seen enough. We have seen enough cases so far, and, and that's not all cases for imp improper integrals yet, but at this point enough, I, what, I, in what I mean by enough is that we are, it's enough for us here to write down a formal definition of uh, some uh, improper integrals, okay? All right, and so now we are ready to give a formal definition of, a, of the two forms so far of the improper integrals, okay? and there will be more uh, forms of uh, improper integrals to be introduced later in the video lecture here, okay? And of course, my version, being, my version of the definitions being worded on the board here is uh, uh, somehow, you know, uh, less wording, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm ha I have to skip out if some wordings compared to the, the way how it's worded in, in many st uh, standard calculus textbooks. So for the detailed wording of these uh, the definitions right here, you can refer to any standard calculus textbook to, to have a, a clear, uh, I mean, to have all that, that exact wording. But then it, my wording up here should be good enough for any one of us to understand what it means by being a, an improper in, in the world. Okay, so from, from, from the two forms that we have seen now, then I can say now as a definition, and it's actually a definition. It tells us what to do, what it means by being an improper integral, okay? And so I'm gonna start out with a statement saying, okay, the improper integral from a finite value a to an infinite or, in, or to an infinity on a function f of x, so what it means here, that integral will be equal to, now you hear my word right here, that integral, that improper integral, so any one of these is the improper, okay, the improper integral that will be equal to the answer that comes out from the limits of the following problem. A definite integral from a to a, an arbitrary t value on the same function as we take limits and going to positive infinity, okay? But then if it's only I'm going to equal to that limit, if the limit exists, okay? The limit exists as a finite value. Okay, so I see there's an, an equality right here, but it, equality really in, in the way how I want to deliver for my calculus students to understand. We only need to worry about equality here anytime this limit turns out a successful finite value. Okay, and then so again, and then that's part A over here. The improper integral of form this form A. Let me write that in red. In, yeah. So this form right here is an improper integral. So as two separate statements. So here the improper integral. Okay. That improper integral, it's just a setup, but then in order to know the value of that setup, we gotta start out by, we have to start out by setting up this limit problem. And if this limit problem is successful, meaning turning into a, a finite value, existing finite limit, then we say that that setup right here, that improper integral has the value equal to this limit, okay? okay? And then when otherwise, I, I will talk about that otherwise, okay? And then, 
that same improper integral the improper integral of this form right here from a minus infinity to a on a function f of x okay, will be equal to the limits on a definite integral from t to a on the function f of x dx okay, by letting t approaching minus infinity this is the case number two that we have seen I mean the the, the, the form number two that we have seen like that okay but then it's only this equality only going to happen if the limits okay if the limits problem so this right hand side limit turn out to be an existing value if the limit exists as a finite value okay as a, as a finite value and so now we were almost done with that definition. Allow me to move on to the other board right there. And so then, as a naming, okay, so anyone or any of the, any of the improper integrals I introduced earlier. Any one of these two we've seen so far, from a to infinity and minus infinity to a. Any one of these two is it's said to be or is called said to be. Divert, I mean con convergent, convergence. All right. If the corresponding limits exist. A finite value. All right. Otherwise, it is said to be divergent. All right. Otherwise, it is said to be divergent. And so, so now I have to clarify it a little bit. So in that way, how it's written, so in that way, how it's written, then, and I kind of, sh I really tried to show that step earlier. I mean, improper integral is, 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 a, is a quite a challenging concept to take at first. So the real logic here is that we don't all we, we don't necessarily we don't always say that this is equal to that limit. The idea now is that in order to handle that problem, we first as a plan we first start out setting up this limit problem, and then once that limit problem turns into an existing finite value right there, then we can say that this limit this integral this improper integral that we're looking for will be equal to the answer that came out from this. Otherwise, if it's and then and then along the way, in that case, if that limit exists, then we can call that the integral or this integral or that integral to be a convergent integral. So, formally speaking, 
we could we should be able to find out if it's convergent or divergent first by evaluating this limit. And then once it's convergent, it will have a value for that limit. And then that value will equal to this, to, to, the, to the improper integral. And that's what the, the, the true logical sense right there of that. And then, so in other words, in the case where the limits here that we're starting out, the limits problem that we're starting out fails to have a limit, fails to have either a, a finite value or even fails to have a limit at all, then in that case, uh, we can we don't even have to say that the we don't even have to say the, the, the integral here equal to whatever. We don't need to even say that. We just say the the integral we get straight to say the integral is concluded to be divergent and then we stop worrying about looking for whatever it will equal to. Okay? And so being able to determine convergence or divergence should come first. And then once it's that convergent, we're gonna be able to find out what its final value is. Otherwise if it's if it's right from the limit step and it's proven to be a divergent one and we can just say get straight into the 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 the, the conclusion saying that the any one of these two integrals is a divergent one and that's the real logic of doing any of these uh, improper integrals there yeah. and of course we're only in the first two forms okay and then we, later on I'm even going to classify these uh, these forms of uh, integral improper integrals into you know a, a what so called a type 1 and type 2 and there are even more types uh, later on okay all right so now i wrote this definition up here not too long but i sadly need to erase that for uh, for you know making space for myself to write out our first formal example so the wording of of this is you know the skipping out a lot of, I mean, some details compared to many uh, uh, textbooks, standard textbooks uh, of calculus, but again, it has, it should have the, the, you know, all the essential understanding of your, of your, the, what it means by being the improper integral. So, why do we call it in, in, in improper? It seems that it's a truth I'm doing, but you see, we, I mean, why do we call that a definition of the improper integral? That's what I, I, I meant to say. So, why is it called a definition? Instead of, it looks like it's a formula, but see, because it defines a way for us. A definition, maybe a lot of time people might think that a definition means it gives a name. Here we already know this thing is called, the name for that thing is called the improper integral. But this definition here defines a way for us to know how to handle a, an improper integral. Okay, just like when back in the days when we're saying, you know, what does that mean by being a definite integral? Then a definite integral is a, a Riemann sum. And so it's, we still have that equality, you know, a, a definite integral equal a sum, and we create a limit on top of that. And so it, it defines a way originally of how we can find a, a definite integral. And then on top of that, we, we, came up, we came out with fundamental theorem of calculus and all that. And so the same idea here, this definition is really, it's, it's a definition, definition, but in a, in a sense that it defines a, a way of how we can handle any of one of these two improper integrals. Okay. All right. So now we are ready for example one. All right. So let's look at example one. And for right here at this very first example, I want viewers, anyone viewing this lesson right here, to pay real close attention to how I'm wording the problem right there, because it's a very standard way of wording problem that you can find throughout many textbooks right there. Okay. And including all of those problems, uh, all of those math problems that are on these days transformed to a web-based version. They, they, they all have this kind of wording right here that I want you to pay attention to that. So now allow me to uh, hold on to my note right here. So I want, so let's determine, so the first thing is to determine, sometimes the, the wording might say decide, okay? So determine whether the integral The integral is uh, convergent or divergent. So that's the first thing to do. That's the first thing to do when you are given any of the, the problem and any one of the, the improper integral. And then here's the next thing. And then if the integral is convergent, if it's convergent,
if it's convergent, okay, then we want to evaluate, for, meaning find a final answer, find a final numerical value for that. So evaluate the, the integral. All right. So this problem here, the wording make it, is making it clear, but it's a very standard way of wording. So the first part in the entire process is to decide or to determine whether any of the given integral I'm about to give up here on the board to be a convergent one or the divergent one. And it's also the, the way it, it sets anybody, this style of wording sets anybody into an actual flow of the logical work right there. So the first thing is always to determine whether, whether or not your given integral, improper integral, of course, is to be a convergent one or a divergent one. And then once it's known to be convergent ones, meaning that, that limits whatever thing is having a, a finite value existing, then we're going to go ahead and find out what that value is. Okay. So the improper integral, the first one that I'm introducing here in example one right here, let's call that the improper integral for part A. So how about the integral from 0 to positive infinity of e to the minus 5x. There we go. So welcome to the first one right here that, uh, you know, in, in a formal example right here that we're doing. Okay. And so now it's in that form A that we've done in, in, that we have seen in our definition earlier that I erased. It's an interval where it goes from, see, the interval for integration goes from 0 to anywhere above that. It's a half interval. And then so the upper limits here is the upper limits here is the one is the one that's being infinite for that. Okay? And so now, so the definition says, so according to the way how the definition set earlier, then we first, so now I want to set you, anyone viewing this video, into a formal, I mean into a logical way of doing that. I wouldn't even say the equal. I'm just saying that we're gonna start out by setting up that integral from zero to t. Okay, it's an arbitrary value t greater than zero. And then we're treating that as a, an arbitrary definite integral problem, just like how I was doing any of those uh, earlier demonstration problems. And then once, if once we are done with the fundamental theorem of calculus part, we're going to take the limits on top of that. Okay, but this time we're allowing the limits, we're allowing t in this limit problem to grow to positive infinity. Okay, so we depart from worrying about this answer here. We depart from that by, but we turn our focus into setting up a, 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 an arbitrary definite integral problem. But then at the end, take limits of that, letting t grow to positive infinity. So now once we have seen, and you have also seen enough cases back in when I was doing the introductory problems, then it, the work now is going to lay down just, just like how we've done it earlier. I'm going to go through the fundamental theorem of calculus to get the first thing, antiderivative. So antiderivative of this is going to be a minus, okay, 1 over 5e e to the negative 5x. All right. And again, I, I will constantly remind anyone, if you're unsure about your antiderivative, whether your antiderivative here is correctly done, it's correctly found, you can always take the derivative here. And on scratch work, of course. Okay, and that, and if that gives you that beginning function here, then you knew that you, then you would know that you have your correct antiderivative found. Okay, and so now, but from that, I am going to evaluate this antiderivative from zero to the arbitrary t value, and then I am going to, I'm going to make more space right there. But then, in the end, ultimately, this problem is a limit problem. So be aware that that's the final process, the final part of the process. Okay, and then further on, further on the fundamental theorem of calculus, then we're looking at a negative one-fifth e to the minus five t. I substitute a t, the upper limits, the arbitrary upper limits of this integral problem into our antiderivative. And then I'm gonna subtract, and now, negative one-fifth e to the minus five times zero. Okay, and then all of that there, I need to treat that. And you can start seeing that this is now at our final st step right here, after completing out the fundamental theorem of calculus, the second part, then we ended up with a, an expression, a function in terms of 
the t variable. Okay, and so now I'm gonna take the limit by allowing t to get to positive infinity. All right, so now let's algebraically simplify our expression a little bit so that we can that, that see a, a better way to take that limit now. But at this point, starting at this point, it's entirely a limit problem now. Okay, and just like any of those limit problems we have done back in uh, calculus one. All right, so now the first term before taking limits, the limits is still here, letting t go to positive infinity. The first term of our problem is a negative one fifth e to the minus five t. Okay, second term is a, it's just a plus one fifth. So this is our expression in terms of t that we need to evaluate for this limit going to positive infinity. Okay, and so now it becomes simple. As we grow to positive infinity, now that term stays the same because it's a constant. Okay, so now as we grow t to infinity, then e to the negative five t will go to zero, and so consequently it's negative one fifth times zero. That's the final limit for for this. Okay, and again the, you have to uh, review your uh, calculus one understanding of to see how I can go from that and go to zero as I take the limit of t getting to positive infinity. Okay, and then here we're adding a one fifth. So our final answer here is going to be a positive one fifth. It's a finite value. It's a finite value. That's a one thing I see so far after observing, after observing that, uh, after uh, after observing that uh, that uh, limit work. And so now that means we can now make the conclusion. So first of all, see the wording of the question is saying. The wording of the question is saying the, we want to determine if this integral, if this improper integral, is convergent or divergent. And so the biggest plan is to set up that limits problem. And if that limit problem turns out to be a finite value, then the integral here will be a convergent one according to the, the definition. So now I am going to say that as a conclusion, that means uh, my integral, my improper integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus 5x is uh, convergent. Okay, that's one thing I'm concluding. So we've got the first part concluded. And now I further say this value, this improper integral, has a value equal. Okay, so that's the logic of that. So we're concluding about convergence. And then once we know it's convergent, it has a value equal to positive one fifth. Now I can circle that final answer as well. All right, so that's how we formally find a, you know, that we're doing this kind of problem. The first step here, the first big stage here is, is to decide if it's a convergent one or not. Okay, and convergent one is nothing but just going through the whole limit process right there. If it has a finite value, okay, right there, if that limit turns into a finite value, then the integral is convergent one. Then we're going to proceed all the way to the end, stating that that integral has final answer equal to one fifth. Okay, so you will get better hang of that as I go through the part B of our example. So that first one here, that first part of example one right here, that integral gave us a, a convergent one and it had a finite value, one fifth. So we evaluated that. So now, let me erase this. All right, so part B of the example. So now let's look at uh, another integral from how about uh, two to infinity, okay, of natural log of x over x dx, okay? 2 over natural log of x, I mean the natural log of x over x, and integrating from 2 to positive infinity. So it's another improper integral where the upper limit right here is an infinity, okay? And so once again, according, we want to first decide if this integral here is a, you know, a divergent one, divergence one or a convergence one. So here, I have to start out by setting up the the integral, a t a, an arbitrary integral from two to an arbitrary t value. Of, so of course t is greater than two somewhere. And then natural log of x over x. And once we've finished with that 
integral, arbitrary integral, definite integral problem using the fundamental theorem of calculus, then we're going to take that as a limit. Letting t grow into positive infinity. Okay, so this is the plan for how to handle that. So I wouldn't say directly equal yet. I mean, many textbooks start saying that this is equal to that, okay? That is also okay to say this. It just means that I feel it's more logical that I should start out by setting up this work, okay? Without saying the equal statement right here, even though writing like this is also okay, as, as, as I said. And so now with this limit work right here, what I'm doing now is that, and so we're de departing from the worries of that uh, improper integral. So now just treat that as a definite integral problem from 2 to some t, some arbitrary t value. All right, so here I have to use a little bit of a substitution. I mean, of course, so all of that technique mentioned here should have been learned prior to viewing this video. And so you can also find my other video lessons on how to do a substitution method right here. So here I'm looking at uh, letting u equals uh, natural log of x, okay? And so that means uh, my, I'm going to lead to having a du dx equals 1 over x, okay? And that means even further that x times du equals uh, dx, all right? So with all that substitution work, I can now start doing the following thing. So natural log of x gets substituted away by u. The x in the denominator did not get substituted away. The dx here is x times du, so x times du. But this is now a, an arbitrary, an arbitrary uh, definite integral. And so the bottom one here has to, so since u equal to natural log of x, so the bottom value here in respect to u variable, so we're going to have natural log of 2 here, okay? And the upper one here is a uh, natural log of uh, t right there, okay? Because u equals natural log of x right there, but if x equals t, then we have natural log of t as the upper limit for this. All right. And so now in that way, in that way now, I, so now I can take away this line, and then, yes, in the end, the problem needs to come out as a limit as x goes to negative infinity. I mean positive infinity. All right. And, so now, and then in the meanwhile, the x here got canceled. Okay. And so now, in my next step, it's a limit problem. t goes to positive infinity. And then the integral becomes a, a much simpler integral from natural log of 2 to natural log of t. Okay. And then here is a u du, so a very simple uh, integral to find. So uh, fundamental theorem of calculus says that we just take the antiderivative, and it's a completely brand new integral in terms of u right here. So it's a one half u square, okay, as the antiderivative of u. We will be evaluating that from natural log of two to natural log of t, okay, and then ultimately we will take limits as t approaches positive infinity. Okay, and so now on my other board, I am going to continue with my evaluation steps, right there, my steps that I'm substituting the upper limit and the lower limit. So here I'm looking at uh, a one half times a uh, natural log of t r square minus a one half times a uh, natural log of two r square. This is actually a value, a, a natural log of 2 is a numerical value. It's just not a nice looking one, so I'm leaving that. We're, a lot of times in calculus, we leave this in exact expression like that, but so now be aware it's a constant value. Okay? Our final expression here, the only term that's dependent on t is here. And then we're going to take the limit as t approaching positive infinity. Okay? And so now, what I'm looking at here is, so it's natural log of t r squared with a one half, but in the end, you have already seen the natural log function. I brought it up earlier. The natural log function has a rising graph right there. So as t grows to positive infinity, the natural log of t grows to positive infinity. 
And so square is going to make it even more positive infinity, more growing to positive infinity. So in the end, this limit here, I have my legitimate reason to say it's a, this limit here goes to infinity. That's what the equal here is for. Okay? But now as soon as we reach into that line saying the limits, we found out, we hit into that line saying the limits turned out to be a, an infinite limit. It could be either positive infinity or negative infinity. Now we can make the conclusion that the integral from 0, I mean 2, the integral from 2 to, to infinity of natural log of x over x. All I can say now, and when we're ready to make that decision, because recall that we, first thing we want to determine whether this integral, this improper integral is convergent or divergent. The answer is now clear. We have found the answer to this limit problem. And so now I have an answer saying that this improper integral is divergent. And now in this way right here, there is no need to, there is no need to find out what that equals to. Okay. Some textbooks also say equal to infinity, but uh, I tend I tend to teach my student to just stop any time that just stop at the point where you made that conclusion that hey the integral here is divergent and there's no need to write the integral equal or whatever. Okay, because it's not a, a true true equality in, in, in that sense of, of, of equal being equal. So now that we came to deciding that it's already a divergent interval, uh, integral, okay, then we just simply stop the problem like there, like there no need to evaluate it. That means the second part of the problem is skipped. Okay, the second part of the problem is skipped. Okay, and of course, it, it, that concept about the equal sign, it will wait until like a much more advanced course like there for, for you to understand how to safely use that equal sign. Okay, but so here, and so somewhere here and there you might see your textbooks or your web-based problem allows you to use equal sign. I mean, so nothing's wrong. I'm not uh, going to be against that at all, but it's, it's me that when I'm teaching, right, I'm, I'm, I'm particularly being clear that, you know, when we get to that divergent, then I, we just stop right there. There's no need to evaluate further. But even if you, you write that, uh, that as the integral equals some infinity value right there, some, some infinity result right there, I wouldn't be against that as well, okay? So you don't need to have, if you're a student studying with me, you don't need to have any kind of worry about uh, whether I'll, I'll do any penalty on, on your work or anything like that for writing things like that. An in, 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 in integral equal an infinity, okay? All right, so let's head out for part C of the problem. Part C of the example. And I want, you know, anyone viewing this video to have a real good solid foundation on, on this problem right there, on this particular, particular kind of problem where it has the style of wording. Okay, so part C, so how about uh, we have an integral from minus infinity to one right there. Okay, so it looks like it's that form number, form B that we've seen earlier in the, in the, um, in the definition that I gave previously. And then here the function is one over one plus x squared. Okay, with the dx. So the function here is a one over one plus x squared. So again, first thing is to decide if this improper integral is convergent or divergent. Okay, so that means now I'm going to depart away from from this, and I'm going to start treating. I'm going to start coming up with a, a an arbitrary definite integral. That's what I'm doing first. All right, so let's start out with a, a, an arbitrary definite integral. And then we're going to use the fundamental theorem of calculus to evaluate that the arbitrary the definite integral with low n being t. And then at, in the end, we're going to allow t to approach negative infinity. All right. And so now, according to the fundamental theorem of calculus, and primarily focusing on this work here before the limits work, focusing on this work as a definite integral problem with the arbitrary lower end t right here, then, well, according to fundamental theorem of calculus, we're first going to find the antiderivative of this, which is going to be a tangent inverse of, of x, a tangent inverse of x as the, as the derivative. Okay? And then, from there, we are going to substitute or evaluate this, this tangent inverse of x from t to 1. 
Okay, and then yes, in the end, that's the, this problem will be a limit problem. And that goes to negative infinity, actually. Okay, but that will wait until at the very final step like that. All right, so that now means uh, I am looking at tangent inverse of uh, 1 and then minus tangent inverse of uh, t. Okay, and that, that comes out for us a, an expression that's entirely now entirely in terms of t after using the fundamental theorem of calculus. And then here I'm going to let t grow to positive infinity. All right, and so now at this point, now let's move on to the other board right there. All right, and so in the next step, tangent inverse of negative 1, well, or how about tangent inverse of 1. I'm going to rewrite that here, tangent inverse of t. And we want to take limits as t goes to negative infinity. Okay. And so in the next step, tangent inverse of 1 is known to be a pi over 4. Okay. And then so that's a constant value. And it's, it's right at this expression, it's already a constant value. And then now we're going to subtract tangent inverse of t. And then we're taking this as, a, as, a, as an expression in terms of t overall. And then we're going to let t grow to negative infinity. So now I'm ready to find the limit now. That first term is a constant. So regardless of what this limit turns out, it will stay the same for the first term like that. Let's find out what tangent inverse of, of t is going to be. OK, so tangent inverse of t, the function is as following for tangent inverse. So as t approaching, so in our problem here, in this case, then t is going to be the horizontal axis here. So as we're getting further out and further out on the left-hand side, okay, because t is going to negative infinity, then tangent inverse will approach a minus pi over 2 down here. Okay, so a negative pi over 2 will be that. Because tangent inverse is, is famously known to be asymptotic between minus pi over 2 and y equals positive pi over 2 up here. All right. And so from observing, after observing the graph now, then we can see that this first term remains pi over 4. Okay. And uh, we are looking at now minus, minus pi over. Yeah, because I made that argument arguments earlier from, from the graph. And so now we're looking at a pi over 4 plus a pi over 2, which gives me a 3 pi over 4 altogether. Okay, but this is not this is just the final answer for the limits problem, for the limit problem. So that means we have a conclusion. So the conclusion now says that our beginning integral problem. This beginning integral problem is a convergent one because that limit that we set up had a, a finite limit, a finite value as a limit. So the integral from minus infinity to 1 on the function 1 over 1 plus x squared is a convergent. All right, and allow me to uh, use shorthand writing. CONV is for convergent. And that now implies further. So now once we know it's convergent, then we're going to say that this problem here from minus infinity to 1 on that function 1 plus, I mean 1 over 1 plus x squared okay, will be equal to the, the answer 3 pi over 4. And that's now our final answer for that as well. Okay. And now let's look at uh, another problem in our example 1 right here. Part D of our example 1. And it is exactly the same wording for the problem right here, the same instruction of the problem. Now I'm looking at uh, part D. The integral we're given here is from minus infinity to negative 1 on 1 over cube roots of uh, x. All right. So 1 over. I mean negative infinity to negative 1 on 1 over cube root of x. Okay. And so now, again, 
to de decide whether or not this integral is convergent or divergent, we first set up that limit problem. Now I'm going to set up a limit problem on a definite integral going from an arbitrary t to 1, I mean to negative 1. And the function here is 1 over cube root of x. Okay. And then we're gonna, once we evaluate this integral, this definite integral with the fundamental theorem of calculus, then we're going to take the limits as we're allowing t grow to negative infinity. Okay. And so now, at this point, I'm seeing that, well, this is a 1 over x to the negative 1 third power. So one more step to rewrite our integral. So from t to negative 1 of u, x to the negative 1 third power. And then here it's a limit problem, letting t grow to negative infinity. All right, so now that means the antiderivative of that is going to give me x to the 2 third power because we add 1 to that and we multiply with the 3, three halves. Okay, and so now with that I am going to go with uh, evaluating that from, from t to negative 1. And this is a limit problem, letting t grow to negative infinity. Okay, and so now from that point on, I'm looking at uh, okay, 3 halves times negative 1 raised to the 2 thirds power minus 3 halves times t raised to the 2 thirds power. Okay, and then we're doing this, letting t grow to negative infinity. Okay. And so now, once again, I'm going to move out to the other board for my next steps. All right, so in the next step, and actually let me rewrite the, the previous step so that we won't have to jump back and forth. So limits, t grows to negative infinity. All right, and then 3 halves, negative 1 to the 2 thirds power minus 3 halves to the two-thirds power. Okay. All right, so in the next step, supposedly then negative one but to the two-thirds power is going to be a negative one, I mean to be a positive one actually. And then I'm going to multiply with a three-halves. So that's, that term here all together is a three-halves. And now I'm going to minus a three-halves uh, t to the two-thirds power. And now we would like to find the limits as t grows to negative infinity, okay, As t grows to negative infinity. And so with this one here, the overall answer will be negative infinity. For this limit right here, the overall answer is going to be negative infinity. And so in that way, in that way now I can conclude, I can conclude that the integral from minus infinity to negative 1 on this function, 1 over cube root of x, this improper integral is divergent. Okay, And knowing that it's divergent, we stop right here. We don't need to say whatever this will equal to. Okay, even, so, even though some textbook or you are also anyone viewing this video is also allowed it to write this is equal to that answer, but I, it just, I myself I want to teach my, my students, my viewers, that uh, just stop right here when we have that conclusion right there about divergence. And because uh, the, the, the equal sign can lead to some dangerous habit later on. Okay, and so, and, and here we know we, don't, we no longer need to evaluate the final numerical value because there isn't one. Okay, so that's all I need to say here for this uh, particular example right there.